And welcome or welcome back from wherever and whenever you're listening. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to come past and give me a listen. I'm Darren and this is my guest list pod, the show where the guests on my list get to have some fun with their favorite list countdowns and we get to know them and their work a little better. If you'd like to get in contact with me, you can find me at My Guest List Pod pretty much everywhere you look. Remember, if you like what you hear, subscribe. And if this is not your first time to the show, then obviously you probably have subscribed, so thanks for that. Uh, Otherwise, just tell someone about the show that you think might be interested and maybe they'll subscribe as well. That'd be great. So I'd love to hear from listeners too. If there's anyone out there that's listened to a couple of the shows and would like to send me through one of their top 10s or send me through a suggestion for a top 10 that they'd like to hear someone count down, that would be really cool. That'd be interesting. I'd really enjoy that. So uh, this week we're talking to a couple of guys from New York who counted down a really cool top 10. But anyway, enough from me. Here's the episode. The guys were fantastic. They were a lot of fun. We did have some audio issues though, so I had to actually take their audio and add it to my compiled or composite audio because my individual soundtrack or voice track didn't actually record properly. So one of the guys, Brian, was only picked up on his partner's mic in the same room. So I took his audio and added it into the show. So you probably miss a little bit of the laughter over the top of some of the things that he said, but I think I've made it fairly good to listen to still. Uh, his audio that he sent through was uh, a lot clearer, so it's doing an injustice to him if I don't actually use that audio so you can hear everything he said quite clearly. Apart from that, I think it's still fine. Let me know what you thought, and without further ado, here we go. What is that? Welcome to How Cool Is This, the five-minute podcast about your ideas and how cool they are. If you have an idea, visit us at howcoolisthis.show slash submit dash and dash idea. Well, now that I have your attention, that is the intro to a very interesting and cool podcast that I was fortunate to come across recently. Brian Wrights and Nick Holder are the hosts of this unique concept and the self-proclaimed arbiters of what is cool. Their show, How Cool Is This?, is a bite-sized, bite-sized podcast that explores ideas sent into them by their audience, and they evaluate those ideas as to whether they are cool or not. By their own description, it's Shark Tank meets This American Life meets Humans of New York. And yeah, I had to Google that last one. However, I didn't have to Google that the guys have a fantastic dynamic and their explorations into what is cool are both thought-provoking and humorous. And it's amazing the insights the boys can come up with in such a short amount of time. Even when presented with the oddest questions about what is cool, is liberty cool, and should we see DMX or BMX on Broadway? Either way, today it is my pleasure to welcome the kings of cool, Brian and Nick, to my guest list pod. Darren, thank you. (laughs) The kings of cool, that's new. Yeah. uh, I don't don't know if I've ever been called that before. We, We like to maintain that we ourselves are not very cool, but we know what is. Um, But I'd appreciate the, the very kind intro. Not a problem. That's my pleasure. So uh, I have heard you say that on the show before, but I don't think you could probably determine what is cool without being at least a little bit cool yourself. We both live in New York City, which has a lot of cool people who we have observed, and it's possible that they have rubbed off on us. And I apologize for the phrasing there. Yeah, I, I think being in one of the coolest cities in the world certainly helps. And, and yes, it is a cool city. There's a uh, uh, whereabouts actually are you in New York? Um, so right now we're actually in um, a studio space that we use to record a lot of stuff for the podcast in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Okay. Um, I live I live in Brooklyn, not far from the studio. And Brian, you're in Manhattan. I am. I, I'm up in Hamilton Heights, Harlem area, and uh, walked uphill both ways in the snow to get here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He- <laughs> He put in the effort to to make it for this part. Well, it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. Yeah, I actually have. I think I spoke about this with one of my previous guests. Um, I have actually been to New York with uh, my wife. That was part of our tour. Well, not tour. We we did it ourselves, but part of where we went uh, on our honeymoon. 
And um, I love New York. It's a fantastic place and there's so much to see and, and do. It's a, a great place. So we, we didn't get into the burbs or, you know, like the boroughs and all the, the surrounding sort of like areas. We actually stayed on Manhattan as such. Mm-hmm. But uh, there was enough to explore on Manhattan. So that was uh, the keep to keep us interested. So, yeah, it was it was really cool. Nice. Yeah, there's there's certainly enough to do on that tiny island to last a lifetime. Yep, definitely. Okay, so let's get to know you guys a little bit more. Let, tell us the Brian and Nick stories. Where were you born and raised? How'd you guys meet? All that sort of stuff. Yeah, so we both met at college. We went to the University of Missouri, which for people listening not from the United States, that is in the middle of the country. I was from Texas. I guess I was born uh, on the East Coast, but I grew up in Texas uh, in a suburb, not in like a, you know, ride a horse to school area, more in a, a, you know, just a city. And then I went up to Missouri. That's where I met Nick. Nick moved to New York after college. I went back to Texas for a little bit and then kind of came up here to do professional work in marketing and advertising. And that's what I do by day podcasting by night and now now we're here okay very good. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um you know like brian said we met at um at college and we we both actually worked at the college radio station it was kind of our first foray into doing anything with with audio we both had shows um i helped run some of the programming and, and some of the management of the station um so it's it's definitely something we've always kind of been interested in and then when brian moved up here uh you know a little after i did um we were just looking for something to do on the side and uh, decided to come up with a podcast. Yeah, well, it's great that you've actually got that experience to, to fall back on, I guess, with, with radio where there's probably even more pressure than when, when you're doing a podcast and you can make some mistakes and just go back and edit. So, Yeah, I, um, it was live radio, so if you uh, cursed on air, uh, you had to be careful because you could get fined by our FCC. Yeah, yeah. So on the podcast, you know, we can do it. We can have a little bit more freedom. Yeah, of course. It's nice. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I see some of the guys who uh, I know, well, I've come to know through the community uh, are now doing some Facebook Live type events, and uh, I think it's very brave of them. I, I don't know if I could trust myself. So. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so how do you come from being college friends in schools with radio experience and now you're together and what's the aha I, I pretty much asked this of everyone what was that aha moment what was missing that made you want to start a podcast and in the niche that you've started it in yeah we had a few different trains of thought that kind of coincided with this idea the aha moment if there was one was i was walking through one of the big uh, i guess i just said trains of thought but a train station in New York. It was called Penn Station. It's kind of a shithole. Apologies for the French, but Nick just introduced that we couldn't curse before, and now now we can. So I wanted to say it. So uh, yeah, that that place is a shithole. And there was a advertisement, like a billboard in there that said, "It's only ninety minutes to Philadelphia." That's a podcast. And I don't know if you had mentioned it already, but we were a five minute show, so all of our episodes are five minutes long. So we kind of had an idea. It's like, okay, why don't we have really short form audio? Yeah. I mean, I, I love listening to podcasts and I, I'm certainly guilty of listening to those podcasts that are two, three hours long. But um, we just thought it'd be interesting to kind of go in the other direction and, and try to stick to this five minute format as a way to just kind of stand out from the crowd. Yeah, definitely. And look, I'll, I think the analytics bear out the fact that the shows that go more than an hour and especially into like an hour and a half and things like that, uh, and above that, uh, probably don't retain their listeners uh, generally as long unless you're Joe Rogan or someone like that. So um, going the short form is, you know, bite-sized little podcast that you could do in between, you know, stations nearly. It's probably a really good idea. And like I said, you guys pack a lot into that five minutes, which uh, I think is really cool. And you're very insightful. And uh, I like the the banter back and forth between you two because you don't always agree on what is cool so that makes it interesting yeah um yeah it, it's it's fun to kind of uh hear what each other has to say because you know when we talk about these ideas we don't really plan what we're going to talk about beforehand so we just kind of turn on the mics and and let it roll and then edit afterwards 
Okay. Well, that's what I was, that was one of the questions I was going to ask is a lot of what you say, because you get the, the questions come in. Do you then pretty much script your responses or do you just riff off the fly? But obviously you've just answered that. You do riff off the fly, which I guess is probably more natural and organic. Yeah. And one of the joys of podcasting is you can make yourself sound more eloquent or uh, you can make yourself sound smarter than you are. You can edit out the ums and the kind ofs and we'll record probably. 10 to 15 minutes for each idea and cut it down to five, which for the most part, we don't, you know, move stuff around, but it's easier to make it sound like we're smarter and quicker than we are because we uh, are able to cut out some of the developments to get to there. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we're giving away all our secrets. Yeah. Well, look, I I don't think it's a a big (laughs) secret. I think pretty much everyone does that. I have a tendency to (laughs) ponder and say, I'm a lot. So, (laughs) So I, uh, yeah, I do a lot of editing as well. I guess it's the uh, the wizard behind the curtain. So that's all good. Speaking of your questions, you guys encourage your listeners to call in. Was that a ploy or a tactic or a strategy on your part to involve your audience in the show, or was it just something that was more convenient? Yeah, I guess po- podcasting inherently is built in with people to kind of spread the word like that's why you have guests is that you have someone on it's interesting they bring in a unique perspective and then they share it out to their audience and eventually over time people build so that was thought about but the other element too that we had considered was that just with the show itself we take ideas and we talk about how cool they are Uh, we kind of had this bubble maybe it is that in uh, there's a perception that podcasting is a lot of uh, dudes talking which I guess that we are talking right now, so and I don't want to. I feel like I, I don't know where I'm going with that, but basically, we we're trying to say, "Hey, we're going to be a platform for other people who have ideas, and whether those are things that people are actively building, or we usually prefer it when it's something that, hey, this should exist, and then they just throw it onto the show, and then we put it out there for somebody else to build." But the I guess answer for that was, yeah, we wanted to give the show. Uh, or, you know, we wanted to give people the chance to participate. We built that in. That's yeah. Cool. And the, um, the, the call in line was kind of a, a, a cool innovation in the sense that before we were going back and forth and trying to get people to send us audio clips and stuff like that. And it was just kind of a hassle. So we were able to set up a free phone number on Google and people can call in and leave a voicemail and it's easy for them to call in and, and deliver the idea that way. But it's also easy for us because we have an audio clip of their idea yeah. um, <clears throat> that we can download and put in the show. Oh, perfect. That's really good. And, and do most people send their ideas through the, the call up line or do you get a certain percentage compared to email? We, we have a pretty wide variety, but on Nick's point for the the phone number when we developed it, you might notice from some of the first episodes that we have a robot voice reading some of the ideas, and that is because they sent in the idea, they wanted us to use it, but they didn't necessarily you know take the time to record it or they didn't have the equipment for it, and that was the development. But yeah, we've found people on you know podcastguests.com and Matchmaker, and we were introduced through pot it which is that's how we found each other for this show and then just if i see something on twitter or on linkedin or wherever that somebody says something we'll just reach out sometimes yeah and you know one of the coolest things we did um i guess almost a year ago now was we just went out to uh, union square park in new york and um brought a microphone bought a couple pizzas and told people like hey if you give us an idea right now we'll give you a free slice of pizza um, so we got a ton of really interesting ideas just from people on the street, uh, which was, was really cool and a really kind of diverse crowd. Um, obviously, we haven't done that more recently given the, the health concerns, but something we'd love to get out there and do again is just kind of meet the most diverse group of people that we possibly can and get them on the show. Well, nothing engages people more than pizza. So that's a, a, a great ploy. <laughs> yeah, it, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny you talk about the robot voice because when I – I did listen, I've listened to a lot of your episodes now, and it's very easy to do that when they're only five minutes long. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I heard the robot voices and I was wondering why. Oh, was it people just not wanting to, to, uh, have their voice recognized or whether or not it was, you know, a controversial idea and they definitely didn't want to be recognized? But obviously 
all that uh, mystery is gone now because it was just a matter of that they they hadn't actually sent an audio clip in. So uh, there was nothing much else to it than that. So fair enough. That's one of my questions answered. So. <laughs> <laughs> we should have re- we should redevelop that story and then just lie. Yeah, yeah. Dan, say it was someone really famous. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully, if we got someone really famous, they would let us use their actual voice so we could get more listeners. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very good. All right, cool. So, as usual, I get to I get my guests to count down a topic of their choosing, and uh, today you have picked top ten coolest band names. Correct. Yeah, that's um, it. We both love we both love music. Um, both something that we we listen to. We love to go to concerts and stuff on the side. So, I think it kind of makes sense for us to to go through the coolest band names. Although not recently, due to the aforementioned health concern. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen a concert in a while. <laughs> and look, I haven't actually asked you too much about COVID because I I know you're probably a little bit COVID out by now too in terms of. You know, you're in one of the hot spots and everyone I ask when they come on the show, I pretty much have to ask them about COVID and it's pretty much the same question. It's just horrible everywhere. So, um, <laughs> yeah, nothing's not really, much to talk about. No, it's uh, <laughs> look, we're, we're very fortunate. We're in Australia. We're nationally, um, pretty much clear. Uh, we had a, we had a case in hotel quarantine the other day and because of that, uh, our, Restrictions sort of ramped up again, but only for a week or so. And again, there, there were no close contacts that were positive. So that's another uh, good thing. And before then, we had a, I think, a run of nationally nearly two weeks where there wasn't one case. So wow. yeah, we're very fortunate like that. So I don't like to go onto it too, uh, to talk about it too much too, because we're in a unique and pretty cool position. And. <laughs> Yeah, the rest of the country, uh, the rest of the world isn't. So I don't rem- like to remind them of that fact. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you don't want to gloat. <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah because it's too serious and there's there's too much carnage yeah, out yeah, there yeah, to, yeah. To, for that. So, but yeah, now look, uh, music. What sort of music do you guys normally go and see, or, or that you listen to? Yeah, and Nick mentioned that we were both at the radio station in college, so a lot of this probably pulls from our time there whether it's kind of that indie rock and older kind of hits that you find at a college radio station. Yeah. I mean, I think we we listen to all sorts of different kinds of stuff. We did find when we were, you know, putting together this list um, that a lot of the coolest band names happen to uh, be kind of like these older bands. Um, yep. There don't seem to me as, as many like cool bands anymore. It's It's all solo artists, which... Can have really cool names, but it's not technically a band, so we we left them off the list. Okay, fair enough. So your list is going to be very interesting for me because there's about two that I recognize. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you guys are going to do all the heavy lifting when it comes to me telling people about these bands and why they're cool or why their names cool. Because uh, um, I actually, well, look, let's get into it. Let's get into your number ten. Let's. Let's hear your number 10 coolest band name, because I do actually know this one as well. I have no idea of any of their music, but I have heard of the band because of the reference to the racing car driver. So what's your number 10 coolest band name? Yeah, the number 10 name. And to preface this, they this band has recently changed their name. So they would have been a, they would have had a higher ranking on the list had they not. The, the band name that we included was Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr., now just called Junior Junior, maybe because of some type of lawsuit, maybe because that was just a mouthful, but it's a cool name. Yeah, it's it's a cool name for a lot of different reasons. Um, Dale Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt was cool. Dale Earnhardt Junior, uh, his son is pretty cool. So the, then to just be Dale Earnhardt Junior Junior, you get all of that cool packed into the name, and it's uh, the Junior Junior aspect of it. I just think is is really interesting and and kind of you don't hear of junior juniors very often it's usually the third but that's not as cool well that that's the actual that's a correct way of phrasing that isn't it instead of junior junior you actually have the second and third and things like that so uh so junior junior is a bit of a a cool way of expressing that especially in a band name so i i have to agree there where how so you heard about this band then you said this is one of the two that you said you knew. Uh, so there's three that I know, and this is one that. I, so the two that I know of heard their music. This is one I've I know of, but I've never heard any of their mu- music. Uh, yeah, 
I mean, this is actually one of the bands uh, that we knew from our college radio days. I mean, I I remember going to see them in concert uh, back in Columbia where we went to school. Um, did they ever come into the station? I can't remember. I yeah, I think they might have come in and done like a live set at the station or, or interviewed. Um, they're cool. We got to see them in like a really tiny, tiny club. All right, cool. Well, let's move on to your number nine. What's your number nine? And yeah, this is going to be an interesting one for you to express. So, <laughs> what's your number nine coolest band name? Number nine is a band that has a very dancey vibe. They're very fun to see live. I would say it's not as dynamic over the streaming platforms, but definitely worth seeing if you ever get the chance, uh, pending health concerns. And they are called Chick 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 is how they pronounce it, but it's spelled three exclamation marks. Yeah, I, I just think this is really cool because they're just using punctuation as their band name. Um, and I, I think it's kind of cool to have something that people look at and they don't really know how to pronounce it. Um, I, that right off the bat just makes me more intrigued and I want to listen to their music. Don't you think the, there is a, a problem with this, an inherent problem in terms of being punctuation marks, that if you're on a bill uh, or a billboard or you're you you know you're coming up the doing a, a show somewhere and there's other bands on that on that <laughs> billboard as well that you just might be considered part of the exclamation marks behind another <laughs> band. <laughs> yeah, it's like this show is featuring Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's really excited about them coming, so because there's three exclamation marks behind next to the name. So but uh all right. So what's the music like for these guys? It's very heavy uh like bass drums with some synths. Okay. So it's I, I feel like the three exclamation marks is kind of uh, a good description of what you feel when you're listening to this music. It's almost stuff that you can't necessarily articulate. It's just excitement. X smacks you in the face sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. With the, it, lo- So you're talking about synth and percussion. Is There's a lot of like heavy bass drum or? It, at least that's my experience with them. We probably... Listened, I've listened to a few of their songs. I've seen them live. They were very fun. Okay, cool. Uh, fantastic. All right, well, let's leave those guys there and move on to your number eight. What's your number eight in this list? So number eight is a relatively new act. Um, this uh, kind of uh, girl started in her own bedroom just making music, um, but then kind of morphed it into this bigger band. And the name is called Soccer Mommy, um, which... I, I just th- think it's kind of funny uh, as a band name. Um, like soccer moms as a concept is something that you hear and like aren't necessarily kind of cool, right? <laughs> soccer moms. Yeah. Just, you know, they take care of their kids. They drive the minivan, whatever. Yeah. But um, to kind of flip that on its head and reappropriate that term soccer mommy um, for this like music that's uh, kind of grunge, indie, like really uh, like emotional and thoughtful lyrics to have be paired with this kind of goofy name, I think is really cool. Is it an all-girl yeah, band? Um, no, so the uh, Sophie Allison is kind of the front woman. Um, okay. But uh, so some other guys in the band as well. Okay. Yeah, and mommy itself is not always considered cool when you're a kid and someone says, oh, you want your mommy. That's not always that cool. But when it is with soccer, soccer mommy sounds cooler than soccer mom. So it's a nice little flip of that. Okay. Uh, I must admit, I'm, I, I might have, I might take umbrage a little bit with soccer mummy being even cooler than soccer mum, but I think they're pretty, they're, they're fairly both uncool, but that's all right, that's cool. But uh, I guess, look, that is that is the juxtaposition between a, a hard rocking band and the name, so you know, it's a bit of a contrast, I guess. So that I guess that in itself is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think it's cool to surprise people. Like if you say, hey, listen to this new Soccer Mommy song, and it's like this you know, intense I- emotional journey uh, yeah. supported by some heavy guitars, like that's yeah. not what you expect, and it's cool to surprise people. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I guess that's what all these bands are going for with their names as well. Totally. All right, so let's get to number seven. What's number seven on your list? So number seven is a jazz trio out of toronto but i guess jazz is a limiting way to describe them they kind of take a lot of influence from hip-hop uh and do a lot of like jazz covers of hip-hop songs which is really interesting and this group is called bad bad not good um all one word all caps is the way it's stylized um i I think i was doing some research so i've seen these guys live and listened to them a bunch they're really exciting um 
there wasn't really much of a story behind the name other than, than one of the members, I guess, before the band started, wanted to have a TV show and he was going to call the TV show Bad, Bad, Not Good, but the TV show didn't work out. So he just used the name for his band instead. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Again, a surprising name and, you know, it gets people's attention. I don't know about Bad, Bad, Not Good. as an, Again, I guess it's that, that contrast and it's not really selling itself very well. <laughs> yeah, no, great, I, I, great. Yeah. we're the best. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's I guess it's a it's more of a, a humbling uh, band name, you know. They're yeah. uh, being a little bit self-effacing, but I, I do think it's cool that they stylize it in all caps, all caps. in this way. Yeah. That it's kind of like really intense. So, of the four that you've just given me, how many of those have obviously you said you've seen Dale Hearn, uh, Earnhardt Jr. Jr. Of the four, have you seen all those guys? Um, I've seen three of them. Dale oh, Earnhardt okay. Jr. Jr. Sucked at me and Bad, Bad, Not Good. I haven't seen Chick, Chick, Chick. Okay. Chick, 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 I have seen. Yeah, so we have a bias, I guess, toward bands that we like with cool names. So that's probably what we should yeah. have named this category rather than the coolest. Yeah. Oh, that That's natural, obviously. So you, you're generally not going to know of other bands with cool names if you're not listening to them. So, um, right. yeah, definitely that's cool. Which I hope that doesn't mean that we have a bias. We we try to be as objective about coolness as we can, but yeah, but we're we're not on our podcast, so we can we can let down the facade a little bit. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> we're on Darren's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. You guys are doing well. All right, cool. Let's take a break from the countdown. As a new podcaster, one of the annoying things I have found about trying to collect the reviews you get for your show is that. Apple, for example, only show you the reviews you get in the iTunes store of the country that the review is made in. So if someone reviews my show in Canada, I won't even know they have reviewed unless they tell me. And I won't be able to see the review unless I log into that country's iTunes page. And honestly, that sounds like a lot of hard work. However, I recently signed up for a service that aggregates all of your ratings and reviews from a number of sources and displays them for you all in one place. Not only that, but they also offer a link for your podcast that automatically displays only the rating and review platforms compatible with your listener's device. So people don't have to wonder or search for how and where they can rate and review your show. Go check out mypodcastreviews.com and I'd be grateful if you could please use my affiliate link when you join to let them know who sent you. It's in the show notes. And if you want to rate and review my show, you can go to lovethepodcast.com slash pod. Now back to the countdown. So the ideas you get sent in sometimes, they seem difficult to evaluate for coolness, especially when they're more of an ethical or a moral concept uh, rather than some sort of a product, you know, like a new style of coffee mug or something like that. What's been the hardest thing or the hardest idea for you guys to evaluate for coolness? We've had a few that have been tough to make into episodes, whether it was because it was something that was just a little too self-promotional and we didn't want to be mean or, you know, if there's something that isn't that cool, we have to kind of, I don't know, we, it's not nice to have a guest on and be like, your idea sucks. That's, yeah. We don't want to do that. And we always try to find the coolest thing out of it. But the one that we probably spent the most time talking about whether we should even have it on or not. Like we didn't even talk about whether it was cool. It was immediately kind of decided as uncool. And then we spent about 10 minutes trying to figure out like justifications for having it was this conspiracy theory that has taken hold of a small, increasingly larger subsection of fringe politics in the United States called QAnon. And we had a hard time figuring out how to, how to broach that. Yeah. I mean, we, like Brian said, we, we don't want to just, um, you know, make fun of people for putting themselves out there and saying like, here's my idea that I really care about. Like, I, I think it's cool, but um, it is almost kind of like offensive or hurtful to other people. Like QAnon is this conspiracy theory that has um, like ruined quite a few people's lives and is kind of almost undermining the, the foundation of our democracy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've, we've had stuff that, that uh, like uh, ideas that felt a little misogynistic or, or ideas that, um, you know, just didn't feel like they were kind of in step with the way we, we want to treat people. Um, so, you know, but I, I think it's important that we have those on and we talk about the nuances of those. Like, you know, we don't just say like this idea sucks. We we talk about why it sucks, you know, why it's not cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because people don't have bad intent. Sometimes they don't have, uh, you know, the right 
education. And that sounds like, you know, like, oh, you need to be educated the right way. I don't mean it like that. But just, you know, some people have like they think they're being right or they think they're being nice and maybe they aren't as uh, as helpful or polite as they think they are. And we don't want to invite people on and then be like, oh, you're su- that sucks. Like, that's right. not uh, that wouldn't be cool of us. Yeah, yeah. We, we, you know, we consider ourselves like a platform. So we want to, you know, a lot of people that wouldn't have their own podcast or wouldn't necessarily get the opportunity to be on a podcast like we, we try to promote that kind of stuff. So we want people to come on and, and share. So you've always got to find a balance uh, about how you talk about those things. Oh, exactly. You don't want to drive potential contributors to your show away by crapping on someone's idea because they're just going to think, well, if I do give them an idea, they don't like it, then I'm going to look silly and I don't want to do that. So I'm just not going to send in my idea. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure that happens sometimes where people are like, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if this idea is cool. I don't want them to make fun of it. So they just, just don't participate. Yeah. When you started, did you think that you were going to get like moral and ethical conundrums to to ponder rather than, like I said, something like I've got a new idea for a, a coffee pot that uh, you know continually boils or you know whatever the you know some sort of a, a physical product that someone wants to see come to fruition, but you, you seem to get a lot of these sort of ideas that are sometimes politic, like you said, politically charged or they're charged with um, uh, ideas that. There's a lot of polarization in the community because of what's being asked. So, did you expect to get a lot of those like broader concepts rather than physical ide- uh, con- uh, physical product ideas? Um, honestly, not really. I uh, thought that more of the ideas we get or we would get would be those kind of like, "Hey, uh, I have an idea that we should make margarita straws out of salt." Like, yeah. like that's the the stuff we had in mind when we created the show. But it's been interesting to see how people kind of like take the format and the concept of an idea and then run with it. And we, we want to keep it as open as possible. Like if, if someone wants to call in and be like, yeah, I have an idea for a cane that clips to the table so it doesn't fall down. Like that's yeah. cool too. We want people to talk about that. But if people really care about the concept of liberty and like that's the idea that they think is cool we want them to be able to talk about that too so it's just been interesting to see the wide range of things that have been submitted yeah we initially approached it thinking that it was about ideas and we still we'll talk about anybody's idea that's the whole premise but the real theme that seems to have kind of been across and obviously it's in the name is just the coolness of it we end up talking about that which obviously that's the point but we, we definitely expected there to be more just abstract, oh, this should exist. I'm going to put the idea out there so somebody else can make it exist ideas. And that hasn't always been the case. Okay. Well, I must admit, as a listener, that was one of the things that uh, I first noticed and I, I wasn't expecting was that the things that were coming in from people were like you just mentioned, is liberty cool? And I thought to myself, how are they going to broach this in terms of coolness? But you guys did a fantastic job with it. And... Um, you, you picked up some of the points of when, you know, liberty isn't cool, uh, in terms of people's search or their, their journey towards liberty and how their liberty impacts other people and things like that. So I, I heard that, that question and then I went, what are they going to do with this? <laughs> I thought it was, uh, it was really interesting. And, and, and then again, episode after episode, there's been some really interesting questions come up and I've, I've, I've sat back while I've been driving or listening at home and gone, good luck, guys. What are you going to do with this one? So, um, <laughs> um, do you ever get that sort of a, a feeling when some of the topics come in and you go, what the hell are we going to do here? <laughs> Yeah, from time to time, and usually we'll kind of riff until we find something with that. I was going to say with Liberty, uh, that is something that, you know, you mentioned you guys were fortunate in Australia. We're unfortunate to have so many liberties here because it seems that <laughs> people aren't maybe using their rights and their, uh, you know, their options to think about the greater good. Yeah, but uh, I mean, like Brian said, uh, sometimes we'll get these ideas and we'll listen to them together and be like, okay, like. Let's just <laughs> see how it goes. And, you know, we'll get into it and just kind of riff and, and, and talk to each other for, you know, 10 minutes or so. And then sometimes we'll get to the end of those recordings and be like, uh, we don't know how this is going to come together. Yeah. And it's sometimes those just, you know, you when you get into the, the editing room, so to speak, um, that's when you, you kind of figure it out. 
Okay. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I guess it's, you know, just riffing about something like that. I, I guess once you get into it, then other points come up and you, you can probably get into a good conversation about it. And then through the magic of editing, it becomes a podcast. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. So with these ideas that come in, uh, you're judging coolness. So is there any sort of base metric that you use or obviously that possibly changes per or as the different style or different type of uh, question comes up about coolness, but is there any sort of matric, uh, metric that you use as a base? Short answer, not particularly. We discussed doing some type of 1 to 10 scale and then saying, like, you know, at the end of each episode, this is 8.1, similar to, you know, you'll see album reviews. Yeah. But we didn't think that would be that cool. Yeah. Um, I think we just wanted more flexibility, too. Uh, as we've gone along and done more episodes, um, we kind of bend the definition of cool sometimes, um, which I think is cool to have this kind of concept, this word that can mean so much. And simultaneously nothing. Right. <laughs> um, so we didn't want to like, you know, uh, make it so concrete that we felt boxed in every episode, right. That we had to assign a number to something. We just like wanted to talk about the, the ideas more broadly. Yeah, I would say before we started the show, I could have defined cool better than I can now. I think it's just this abstract, ephemeral feeling that signifies that something is enjoyable or new, but familiar, but it just generally exciting, I guess. I don't, that didn't even make sense there. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know what you mean. That's why we what, edit. <laughs> I know what you're trying to get at. And I, I guess that's the that's the problem. Now that you've actually had all these questions come in and you've, you've questioned yourself sometimes uh, about coolness because it is subjective as well in terms of, uh, I guess, your 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 personal biases towards certain things and things like that. Uh, it's hard to to give a a baseline, or it probably was easy to give a baseline idea of what uh, the definition of cool coolness was before, because you you hadn't explored all the the vagaries and nuances of of oh, is this really cool, and is it cool because of this description, or is it cool because of this point or that point. And then, as I said, you start to question yourself and go, well, yeah, that's not really as cool as I thought it was. So um, I could see where originally your idea of what was cool was probably easier to relay than it is now. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's fun to, to see how it's grown too. I mean, um, we've, you know, even though our format hasn't necessarily evolved over uh, what, like 80 episodes now, 84, um, 84, uh, like the way we talk about things, I think, has. Uh, and so it's just been interesting to even, you know, if you go back and listen to those early episodes, like the way we describe things, it's just I don't know, it, it feels a little bit more like rigid. Um, and, and now uh, I like that we feel a little bit more fluid. When yeah. we're, we're talking about whether or not something's cool. Yeah. And I, I get from listening to some of your earlier episodes and to into some of your later episodes, you're like, like you said, you're a little less you're a little bit more fluid in terms of rolling with the punches about what's cool and not being so divided in terms of, no, this is cool and that's not cool and it's black or white, whereas you are you can actually see the cool in some things now. So, um, yeah, I guess that's just a, a growth of uh, you guys and, and the podcast itself. Yeah, I, I think we're we're trying to be a little bit more nuanced. We don't want to... You know, the podcast would be 30 seconds long if someone had an idea and we just said, that's cool. And that would yeah. be it. So, yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> that That could be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that was a different podcast idea. That's a bite sized, bite sized uh, yeah. podcast. Yeah, that's, that's our new show. Is this cool? Two minutes long. <laughs> yeah. Nib nibble size podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you get a lot – as you just said, you've got 84 episodes. That's a lot of episodes. That's a lot of ideas. What has been your best and worst idea that has been presented? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't know. We, we probably both have different answers here. Um, I think the worst idea is, is maybe a little bit easier. That, that QAnon idea that we talked about before was probably the worst idea, or maybe it was uh, early on somebody sent in an idea uh, – to run a doggy daycare uh, that was a scam. I thought you were um, going to say that, yeah. Which is pretty bad. I mean, it's a good idea. It's just not, like, it's morally bankrupt. Yeah. And we don't, we like dogs, so we don't want them to be sad. Well, I don't think they'd be sad yeah. as such because they just wouldn't know any better. They just wouldn't be getting the pamper. Right. Well, 
<laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that's the evil genius of that idea, I yes. guess. <laughs> um, I don't know, Brian, what, what do you think is the best idea that we've had? We So we had an award show where we awarded, you know, the most cool, the coolest idea, the least cool idea. But that's different than the best idea. Uh, I actually wasn't totally sure. I would say the worst idea was probably this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Surely not. Just, just kidding. A little bit too, uh, you know, self-deprecating. Yeah. <laughs> I think we we had somebody come on who had built an app that allowed anybody to edit or not edit to audit an election. So it's like they were able to basically crowdsource a bunch of results and then have a third party verification of an election, which that seemed, uh, you know, earlier Nick had talked about the integrity of a democracy that seemed something that uh, as a baseline is needed in a society like the united states at least that you know that's what it's built upon so i'd say that was probably the best idea as far as yeah yeah like, utility goes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, that was an idea that like actively um that people could participate in and feel good about participating in but then also kind of actively did some good but also didn't take much work right right it built into people's schedules sort of yeah. So, you know, it's it sometimes those ideas like aren't the most fun to talk about. Like, you yeah. know, um, you know, DMX on Broadway is more fun to talk <laughs> about, I guess. But like, you know, it's it's good to get ideas that like actually make a difference too. Yeah, definitely. And when it comes to democracy, I think it's probably a really good idea to get everything you can to bolster that in the states at the moment. So, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, and again, that's not a comment. Like, I mean, everywhere. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things we seem to be, uh, falling into a, a mire of, uh, corruption everywhere in the world at the moment. And, um, so anything we can do to make it better across the board, I'm definitely in favor of. So it was that the, was that the, the idea that was based on sort of like uh, getting, uh, people's, uh, voting patterns or not voting patterns as such, but the, the way they, they voted from the was, you said it was an app, but I, I remember hearing or listening to one of your episodes about someone who there was one of your states and they tried to ratify how people had voted by going door to door. Yeah. Um, so that, that was, a, that was a slightly different idea. Um, okay. But yeah, but I, I remember we, we thought that one was, was interesting because, yeah, I guess you could get really accurate results that way, but the practicality. Yeah, of, I didn't think it was very you know, practical. Going on banging on doors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't think that was even in a, a place like Australia where the population is a lot less than where you guys are. I didn't think there was any sort of practical uh, application of that <laughs> idea. So fair enough. All right, cool. Thank you guys for for that. Let's get back into your countdown. So we are up to. Number six in the top 10 coolest band names. So give me your number six, please. Okay, number six, and hear me out on this one. <laughs> it might sound not that cool, but it is. It is if you're a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a band called The Zombies, which is a pretty cool name, but that's not this one. This one is called Let's Eat Grandma. And I know what you're thinking. That sounds uh, not appetizing at all. Well, the the name is funny because it's kind of a play on punctuation where uh, there, there's a kind of, I don't know what the exact word is. There's a word that describes, you know, like how Germans have a word for everything. There's a word that describes this grammatical situation. But basically, it's the idea that uh, having a comma in that changes the complete name of the sentence. So it's like, let's eat grandma versus let's eat comma grandma. Uh, okay. Okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brian picked this like really grammatically nerdy name, um, but I, what I think is cool about this one is that it's like really intense on the face, right? Like, let's eat grandma. It's just like, oh, okay. Like, what, what's this going to be like? But then when you dig into the story of like the the meaning there and kind of the layers of what that phrase means and how it can be manipulated, like that's cool. No, but yeah, it, but it's cool on, on both levels. Like if you don't want to dig deeper, it's fun. Um, but if you do, you kind of get some more cool out of it. Yeah. And then the music's really great. Yeah, that helps. And yeah. kind of not in line with what the band name sounds like. So that was something that I liked about it. Well, well I was going to say, either way, whether it's Let's Eat Grandma or whether it's Let's Eat Grandma, they're not exactly the 
the greatest of names I would have thought for uh, <laughs> for a band, even with the play on punctuation there. But uh, but again, it's probably that again coming back to that that contrast between, like you said, really good music and a really weird name. That that is what gives you the coolness. So yeah, the vagaries and nuances of the German language. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things. It's a a um, it was a hobby of mine. I was learning German for a little while, so um, very interesting language. <laughs> I bet. I, I digress though. So uh, let's get back to the countdown. Number five. What's your number five cool name? And I I, I think this one's pretty cool too. So yeah, I, I think everybody has probably heard of this band. Number five is Guns and Roses. Um, just a, a cool name because of the contrast there right like you've got guns this really like masculine aggressive thing and roses this very sweet kind of um feminine you know more soft thing yeah, yeah. and uh um you know it, it's just it's like a perfect name for this band that is a, a at the same time both like super aggressive but can be really sweet and kind of melodic in their music yeah um i thought there, there was going to be like a, a better story behind this one but honestly it was that um there was a band called la guns uh and yes. they kind of disbanded and then there was a band called hollywood rose uh that had axel rose so those two bands got together and they're just like well let's just smash our names together <laughs> guns and roses okay yeah that makes sense and i actually like the the band's icon or their logo the fact that the the roses are wrapped around the guns and things like that i think that adds to what you're saying about the intertwining of the the masculine and the feminine and the fact that their music can be as hard as all get out but you know then with november rain and some of those other songs it's a a lot more melodic and you know so yeah it's a it's a complete package in terms of marketing i guess for those guys and you'll notice from our list no spoilers but the word and is never on the list. And in this one, they don't use and, they don't use the ampersand, they use n apostrophe, which is a shorthand, cooler way to say the combination of two things. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it, and would feel like too uh, boring, right, yeah, for a yeah. band. Like if it's guns and roses, but guns and roses, um, yeah. I'm like, ooh, okay, like they they like to have fun. That's a bit too much articulation for their bands too, I think. So for their for their uh, fans, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of which I am one. So don't worry about that. <laughs> sorry, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Brian. You were going to say something. It was not that insightful, but I will say it again. It's the difference between chill in and chilling. Yes, right. Yeah, chilling is just not <laughs> that cool. Friend. No, no. Me and my friends were chilling. Yeah, exactly. It's much cooler. All right, so let's get to your number four, and I'm a little worried on this one because I I'm, I think I know who you mean. So uh, why don't you give us your number four? Yeah, so uh, number four is a very classic Motown group uh, headed by Diana Ross yep. um, called The Supremes, yep. um, which there, there's a lot of great Motown names out there like The Temptations, The, the Four Tops, uh, things like that. But I just love the Supremes because, you know, to pick that as your band name right out of the gate, you're like, we're the best. Yeah. We're Supreme. Yep. We are the, the best thing you're going to listen to. And I, I just love that kind of like confidence in your band name. Which is the opposite of bad, bad, not good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but also at a time when I think there weren't too many women in music and there still aren't. But back in what the 60s, 70s, that was especially rare. Yeah. Yeah. So so for like a, a, an all female group to come out and say like, you know, in their their band name that they're better than the all male groups, um, I think was kind of really transgressive for the time. But yeah, but that made it cool. Yeah, definitely. And Diana Ross has been this person that has, you know, her music stands the test of time and she's still doing music, obviously. And um, she's yeah. still fantastic. You know, she's still supreme. She's she's great. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, but that's the thing about music. Good music is good music no matter what the time, I think. And theirs has stood the test of time. And that's a great name. And for all those reasons you've just given, and it's, it's a very cool name. So, Yeah, 100%. It's, it's a name that you have to make good music to live up to, but the Supremes did that. Yeah, you're in trouble if you're just a mediocre band and you're called the Supremes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm sure there are plenty of really, really cool band names out there that we didn't know because they didn't make good music. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. 
Okay, so let's get back into the questions. Uh, I wasn't sure if I've asked you this question. I'm not sure if I've asked you this question yet. How long has your podcast been going? We started our first episode in July 2019. So about a year and a half as of this recording. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that that's a, a long time yeah, to 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 actually have been doing the show. What what ha- if you were going to start the show again? What would be something that you do different? Mm, um, I don't know. Well, something that we have tried to do and we set out to do was we wanted to have a diverse set of ideas like coming from different backgrounds and. When we set it out, we kind of told everybody in our network, hey, we're doing this show, please send in your ideas. And maybe that was a bit of a reflection on us that our network wasn't as diverse as maybe we thought it was. But it's definitely something that we have to be much more intentional about seeking that out than we thought we would have had to be. Okay. Yeah, I I, I think, um, you know, if we, we could have spent maybe a little bit more time building that community and infrastructure in terms of, of ideas and like finding some interesting people to, to come on the show. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I feel like we did a lot of prep work otherwise. Like we talked a lot about the format and like what we wanted it to be called, like all the little sound drops and, and invested in some equipment and, and did all this stuff. Um, and I think we just assumed that we were just like, well, people will submit. And um, you know, it, we, that didn't happen uh, as quickly. I think now we've got a little bit more uh, critical mass and like ideas are, are rolling in at a, at a better clip. But like early on, you know, we had to do a lot of legwork to get people to come on the show. So I think if we would have just, you know, um, from the get go been more uh, just established a better foundation of kind of guests and, and who we wanted to bring on that, that might have made our lives a little easier. Yeah. Have that content ready to go. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel you there completely because I thought that was going to be an issue with myself and I, I actually did, I think it was four interviews before I actually released anything just to have them uh, yeah. in, in reserve so that if I did get busy, uh, I'd, I'd still have something to put out so I, I could understand. I, I hear that a lot from people. Um, there's another guy who I, I spoke to recently and we, we're going to do a show together sort of thing, but uh, I sort of asked him just off the cuff, you know, your show's really successful and it's very polished and, and professional, but what would you do differently if you started a, a podcast again? And that's exactly what he said. He said, I'd have about eight episodes in reserve to begin with straight away. Um, he yeah. said, this this record and edit on the fly week to week, he said, it does your head in and uh, it's <laughs> you know, it can kill you sort of thing. So um, I hear that a lot from, from people. So, okay, so let's get to a couple of questions. This part of the podcast I'm trying to devote to uh, people who are either you know part of my listener base or part of Patreon or something like that and give them a chance to ask you guys questions. That's why I, I promoted you guys coming on on social media just to get a little bit of feedback. And I got a couple of questions in, so if you don't mind answering them. Yeah. All right. So the Great. first one's from gvracetech at gmail.com. And he asked, have oh, – I assume it's a he. Uh, have any of the more substantial physical product ideas that you've been presented with ever come to fruition shark tank style? I love that question. And that is something that we eventually want to get to. We haven't done it yet, but someone had an idea for, uh, I guess it was a platform or service called hire a Karen where, uh, I don't know if this has made it to Australia. But- we have our own Karens. Karens aren't just <laughs> just the domain of this of the states. We have our own Karens, so we understand what okay. you're talking about. <laughs> okay, I, I do want to hear more about that. But yeah, we, that was something that we thought. Oh, you know, this is actually a great idea. We could probably get people to, you know, sign up for that. And we wanted to make it, but just a matter of kind of time and resources. We, you know, when we grow our user or not user, that's I sound like some weird like I sound like Zuckerberg. Once we grow our user base, and then we'll <laughs> no. But once once we grow, uh, you know, a listenership. It's something that will have that critical mass that Nick mentioned, and we can kind of start to, you know, bring in resources to help those ideas come to life. Yeah, I think I think one of the hopes um, that we'd love to see happen is someone comes on with an idea that they're like, I I had this idea, I just don't know how to bring it to life, and that someone who's listening, you know, hears that and they're like, oh, I don't have an idea, but I have the ability to produce things or yeah. to make an app or, yeah. or whatever, and then you know we would be able to connect those two people and they'd actually be able to, to do something. So I, it hasn't happened yet, like Brian said, but I think that would be ultimately like one of 
our goals and would be a really cool success story for us to see one of those things get made. That, that, yeah, that'd be, that's a, another extension, I guess, to the podcast. That'd be fantastic if you could bring creators and people with ideas and things like that together, you know, people that have got the resources and people that have got the ideas and you can get something to uh, substantial to come out of that, that, that'd be, you know, there'd be a lot of kudos in that for, for your show. So um, definitely. Yeah. Hopefully someday. Cool. All right. Let's get on to the next question. This is from podchimp at gmail.com, uh, which is a really cool name, actually. Um, has there <laughs> been an idea that has been so good that you wanted to steal it? I guess I kind of answered that with the hire a Karen. <laughs> yeah, I guess you did. <laughs> which, which the person who sent that in was my cousin. So that wasn't, or I guess it was my cousin-in-law. Is that still considered your cousin? Yeah, who knows? Cousin. Uh, and he was a winner of a Coolio, for what it's worth. I don't want to spoil that episode. I guess I just did. So uh sorry <laughs> How good. um another one that okay. came in it was called the exit interview and that was one of our friends from university we both went to journalism school and he's a working journalist and we are now podcasters so you could call us media personalities too <laughs> but he had this idea that was inspired by uh, a story around facebook where a lot of these tech companies or any of these companies with a lot of resources when someone leaves the company they attach the severance payment to a non-disclosure agreement. So you don't get money when you don't have your paycheck unless you agree never to talk about what happened. Yep. Uh, so his idea was a platform to crowdfund uh, that severance payment so that way people could have the right to speak about what happened while still feeling financially secure while they got back on their feet. And that was something that we thought, oh, this, you know, one of those things like, oh, this would be cool if this exists. We should build it. But then we just put it out there. For other people to build yeah um yeah I, that that's that's one that we'd love to like ha hopefully like someone's listening that could like build that platform or or you know it just help these people kind of be able to, to tell their stories um yeah that, that was a good one i think my there's one idea that comes to mind for me that i don't necessarily want to like steal and try to get it made but i would just love that it if it existed and someone had the idea for AirPods that you could wear in public that so like you could have a conversation with somebody so you could hear what they're saying and they'd be more clearly be able to hear what you're saying. So if like you're in a really crowded restaurant that's really loud, you can both pop on these headphones and have a clear conversation. Okay. I wish that existed. I'm not going to try to make it, but without everybody having to scream over each other and make it, yeah, you know, a perpetual cycle of loudness. That's a great idea because obviously the application for that for uh, people with uh, a hearing loss and you know the elderly, yeah. elderly and things like that, but also just for you know crowded spaces. You know, I was out at a function last night that uh, we talked about off off the podcast sort of thing, and it was a, a very loud venue and um, trying to talk to. Uh, my boys, my sons, or anyone for that matter, was really, really hard. And uh, I think the there's actually a there's a bit of a market for that idea. That would be fantastic because you know if you have that direct contact with the person that you you want to speak to, and even if it was just one of those headphones that you put in one ear, let alone two ears, yeah. but if it was really loud, two would be perfect. And if you could have that direct audio connection yeah that, that'd be, be great uh it'd mean probably everybody would walk around with earphones <laughs> in their ears, but, uh, yeah but, unintended consequence but yeah so uh yeah could you imagine hijacking other people's conversations <laughs> that had never ha that had <laughs> never happened <laughs> no 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 <laughs> all right fantastic okay so that that's a couple of questions from uh the masses uh the masses the the listeners so um uh, the biggest uh thing for me about that is there's two people that listen so great thanks guys so yeah that's awesome <laughs> yeah i'm glad you got people sending questions that's we appreciate that <laughs> yeah that's cool all right let's get back into your picks this is the the top three so these these have to be pretty cool names so why don't you give me your number three on the list of top 10 cool band names number three is a band called tv on the radio which pretty self-explanatory why that's cool but i'll still explain it <laughs> and i think it's that level of bravado that you saw with the supremes but with a bit of cleverness too because you have to think about it you're like oh tv that's uh what and then on the radio uh, you know it's when you're listening to it so it's like the entertainment of tv on the radio i said to everybody who already knew that i i like the the fact that it's 
something that just couldn't even really exist, right? Like it, that you can't put TV on the radio, but that didn't stop TV on the radio from making it their band name. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just one of those things, like Brian said, when you have to think about it a little bit, but not too much, uh, that, that I think makes it cool. Yeah, definitely. Podcasts or TV on the radio. Well, I was, I was about to say, actually, that's, that's the first thing that comes to mind now for me. It probably wouldn't have before podcasts were around because there's a lot of play or there's a lot of podcasts who, take that aspect and incorporate it into their marketing, like theater for the mind and for audio dramas yeah. and things like that. So TV on the radio for me, I instinctively went straight to podcasts. Uh, that's what it, mm. it sort of sounds like for me. So, uh, and I think there's actually a podcast that says that their, their audio drama is t- uh, TV of the mind or something like that. So, um, really? Yeah. 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 Uh, TV of the mind or. I can't remember how they phrase it, but, um, yeah, I instinctively went, Oh, that's a, yeah, that reminds me of podcasts. So audio drama podcasts. So, uh, as huh. well. So, yeah, but, uh, and something we've talked about too is podcasting itself is, you know, we like to do it, but as far as comparing it to the general consensus of radio, radio is probably considered like, Oh, you're on the radio. That's people will think that's cooler than if you're like, Oh, you're on a podcast. Yeah. 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 There's there's finite resources when it comes to radio, right? Like podcasting, and one of the things we love about it is that anybody can do it. Like mm-hmm. in, in the democratization of the platform and, and the equipment and the technology, like it's great that anybody can get on there. But there is some exclusivity about the radio that, that still makes it feel pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. And it's just that all that history behind radio, I guess, too, that, you know, uh, gives that legitimacy to, you know, being on the radio compared to having your own show. So, uh, you've got to go through, you've got to jump yeah. through all those extra hoops to, and, and be a professional to be on the radio, which is pretty much the way it is. So, yeah, cool. All right. Uh, number two. Uh, now, I, don't, I wasn't sure if you were making a, a statement from the 80s or uh, you're actually <laughs> giving me a, a band name here. So, um, number two uh, on your list. Yeah. Uh, well, the band name is a statement from the 80s, and I think that's what makes it cool. Yeah. Uh, I will preface this by saying this is one of my favorite bands, so there's um, some clear and inherent bias here, but the music itself is pretty ambient. It's a lot of guitars. It's just it's nice i I very much like it so that's a bit of a bias but the band is called the war on drugs okay yeah i i like uh repurposing this phrase from the 80s that um i think has a lot of different connotations and, and and a lot of different ways that you can interpret what the war on drugs means like whether or not it was a failure whether or not it should have happened in the first place but um just taking that as a, a band name um i think is a really cool act of repurposing okay yeah and I, I think the other thing too is you know we don't want to get too into this but the general perception of drugs and rock and roll is cool so so to speak I, i'm you know I'm, I'm sober myself or which doesn't mean yeah anyway you know i i for me drugs aren't cool but I'd say the general sense of drugs are like, oh, cool, rock and roll. So I think there, there's an element of that too. And then the war on that and then the, the fusion of what Nick said. I won't go too too far down the rabbit hole with this. Yeah, but there's something cool about playing with the conventions of what it means to be a successful rock artist, right? Like, of course. Like Brian said, that you assume that everybody is you know, doing uh, all sorts of drugs all the time and to come in and, and you know, kind of try to be the antithesis of that in your band name. Uh, is certainly intriguing. Yeah, and I, I think that's what a lot of bands probably go for. They they like to, like you said, be the antithesis of what they're actually presenting because it's yeah. such a contrast to what they are, and that's what makes it cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And what's the what's the music like for for these guys? TV on the radio and the War on Drugs is. Uh, I, I get the impression that these are a lot of these guys are indie rock bands. Yeah. That that is for better or worse, what we seem to pull from. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're an indie rock band. I would say that they're more of uh, like a phrase I've seen on the internet to describe them as dad rock. <laughs> dad rock. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, I wouldn't say it's the most challenging music, right? Okay. Like you're not going to grow from it necessarily, but it's just like good music to put on and listen to. And like, it just, it's good driving music, especially the war on drugs. 
Okay. I've grown from it. Sorry, Brian? I just said I've grown from it. I was contesting something that Nick said. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, see, that's what I like about your podcast. You guys don't always uh, see eye to, eye to eye on the same on the same uh, subject, and uh, uh, the little quips that come from both you. It's it's sometimes you have to really listen to to get them. All, sometimes they, you, you miss them, but because uh, they're, they're they're very you know, nuanced sometimes, so it, it's cool. It's cool. All right. Yeah, look. It's you know what? It's it's cool to disagree every once in a while. Ah, oh, look, the world would be a, a horribly boring place if everybody agreed. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I wish that the uh, the level of uh, outrage f- <laughs> that you see from a lot of people when they don't agree was not as violent. <laughs> but, right. uh, you know, uh, the landscape's definitely better because we're all different. So, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so, number one, uh, your top or your coolest Band name. Uh, now, uh, do, do I get this right that you, you were leaving this as a surprise for me or is considering what we've seen in terms of punctuation on your uh, your <laughs> countdown, uh, close bracket, it's a surprise, uh, open bracket, sorry, it's a surprise, close bracket. I wasn't sure if that was a band name. <laughs> so um, uh, illuminate uh, the situation for me. So. <laughs> Yeah, a little behind the scenes for the listeners. We sent over a few in advance, but we didn't. We left the last one as a surprise. It, it is not called that, although I could see <laughs> how that could possibly be the case based off of some of the things we've chosen. I, yeah. I think I might start a band now called uh, It's a Surprise. I reckon that would be a fantastically <laughs> cool name. And leave the brackets in too. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. All right, so what is your number one? Well, I was going to say, before we get into the surprise, I wanted to ask you, Darren, if there was a band that you wanted to see on this list or you would have put on a list that was similar that we did not include. Ah, okay. That's a good question. I haven't, uh, I, look, I, I, when I first started my podcast, I used to actually count it. The first ever episode I did, I counted down a top 10 with my guest and no one really wanted to hear my top 10. I didn't think so. I just got rid of that. And it also made the episode exceedingly long. So, um, <laughs> but, so I don't do any work of my own when it comes to what I would think. I obviously think, oh, maybe this, <laughs> this is a cool, I like, look, if I, I'll, I'll stop nattering on and say i like the dandy warhols i thought warhols i think mm, that's a really yeah. cool name um yeah, that's a good pick if you had to put me in a corner and say you got to give me your coolest name and it, it, off the top of my head would be dandy warhols guns and roses to your head <laughs> yes yeah, so put some guns and roses to my head exactly right so yeah but uh so yeah so um yeah that's what all I've right, come all up right with. we'll get to <laughs> We'll get to our number one then. All right, I appreciate cool. hearing, hearing your pick. So, our number one uh, coolest band name. Uh, this might be a controversial choice. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have to explain the the reason behind this being number one on the list. But we think the number one coolest band name of all time is the band. That's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They, they 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 this band. Um, you know, from the, the 60s and 70s is when they were the most popular. They started out as a backing band for Ronnie Hawkins, which is this kind of folk blues guy, and then eventually played with Bob Dylan a lot. Um, and because they were a backing band for so long, everyone just called them the band. Like, they were just the band that played with these other people, and so they kind of adopted that moniker. Yeah. Um, and, and they are, you know, because they have that name, like, they are the definitive band. No, no one else is, is the band. Yeah, they exactly. are the band. Yeah, 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 definitely. That's, uh, that puts a pretty much a, a full stop. Speaking about punctuation, that, that's a, a pretty much a full stop to everybody else. We are the band. So. Right. Right. I just, I just think it's cool to, to be like, you know, that's it. There are no other bands. Uh, it's just us. You know, it'd, it'd be like if we named our podcast the podcast. Mm-hmm. Like, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that look at and I understand that's it's a it's a great pick. It it really is a. I don't think anyone could probably uh, question the fact that that's a pretty cool name for a band because it is definitive. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people would have uh, liked to have uh, thought of that themselves. So yeah, that's a that's a cool number one. Yeah, because a lot of the other names like there's an element of trying really hard to it, where yeah, it's cool, yeah, it's unique, yeah, it's interesting, but. You could tell that somebody probably sat around in a room and was like, oh, what's the coolest thing we can come up with? And this is cool because they just like, they just threw it out there. Like, oh, that's up. We're the band. All right. 
Yeah. And owned it and will own it forever. Right. I, I think one of those things that will always be cool is uh, being effortless, right? Like um, one of the, the, the ways you can define cool is not trying too hard. So just, you know, you're a band, you call yourself the band um, yeah. like that. That level of just not trying to come up with a cool name <laughs> makes it cool. And, and that's what I, th- I think you're right. Sometimes it smacks of trying too hard if you've got this really um, weird name and if it doesn't match your music in some way or be a, or is a contrast to your music and then it's just a name that you came up with. Um, I think there was a, a band, I was just trying to find it on my phone, uh, there's an Australian band that I heard of once, and uh, that's right, here it is. It's called Scraping Fetus Off the Wheel. Uh, and I was <laughs> like, uh, no, and then they changed, I think, to Fetus Under Glass in 1981. Oh, and, uh, and I was like, that's just wrong for the sake of being wrong sort of thing, I guess, and just... <laughs> Right. Yeah. And I don't know what their music's like. I've never actually listened to them, but I, I remember someone telling me about them once and I was just trying to find it on the phone and I did. And it's, yeah, um, I don't see that as cool as such as just disturbing. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. You you know, they came up with that band name uh, in an effort to get a reaction from sure. people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And like, yeah, I, I, I mean, it, there's something to be said that, that that maybe it's cool to kind of toe the line and be edgy, but to do that just because you want to be edgy, uh, not because you are edgy, yeah. isn't cool. Yeah, definitely. That's a that's a great way of summing it up. So, uh, fantastic. That's that's it. That's your your number ten. So, uh, you suffer, it's number ten. It's your number one. So, all right, for everybody out there, I'll just go through your number, uh, your your list of top ten cool band names. So at ten, we have the Oh, it's a band formerly known as Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. Uh, at number nine, it's Chick 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 or exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. <laughs> Maybe they should call, them, call themselves that. Maybe. <laughs> Although on a on a, a playbill, that'd be a lot to put on there, I guess. So um, uh, <laughs> number eight, it's Soccer Mummy. Number seven is Bad Bad Not Good. Number six is Let's Eat Grandma or Let's eat, Grandma, <laughs> depending on <laughs> how you interpret it. Um, Guns and Roses at number five. Number four, The Legendary Supremes. At number three, it's TV on the radio. And number two is The War on Drugs. And at number one, it's The Band. So uh, <laughs> I would have to say, guys, that that's a cool list of ten. I think it's a cool 10. Uh, I don't think there's too many people that could say that any of the, the, the bands on there aren't cool for any sort of reason. You guys have done your homework and uh, come up with a fantastic uh, list. So, uh, and well, not, not a fetus under glass on there anyway. So, <laughs> no, but I, I, I will say if uh, someone has uh, an idea of what they think the coolest band name is and it's not one of these, uh, they're welcome to call into our. Uh, phone number and leave us a voicemail and maybe we'll have them on the show and we can explain to them why their list is wrong or right or cooler like yeah, you know yeah, you heard we heard you say dandy warhols and right. we were both like oh damn that was a good yeah. one all right guys that's uh that that's it i i guess it's time now for you to uh, play your social links and anywhere that uh people can get in contact with you and and before i do that too i just wanted to reiterate what you said about people calling into your show with their top 10 list. If anyone wants to put forward their top 10 list uh, to Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, uh, chuck them on there for me and I'll have a look at them. And next week I'll probably pick one to read out on air. So get your, your top 10 coolest band name lists in. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what people come up with. And I might even do one on my own. But uh, if you've got one, Ooh, all right. yeah, send it to me and I'll read it out next week on the show. But guys, plug away with your your contact details and your social links. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll start with the phone number. I don't know if Nick said it already, uh, but it's 848-863-9917. Yeah, so if, if you want to be on our show, if you have an idea that you just want to get out there, 
you can call that phone number, leave us a voicemail, and then we can use that recording, that idea on the show. Um, but a, a good place to go to kind of get more info on the show in general and, and also see that phone number, look at past episodes. Everything is our website, and that's howcoolisthis.show. Other than that, uh, we have a Twitter account that we're trying to use a little bit more often. We're not great at it. Um, it's uh, at how cool is this one, number one <laughs> at the end there. Um, otherwise, um, I don't know. I, I, we're on kind of every podcast platform, uh, wherever you like to listen. Oh, yeah. Uh, Brian likes to use LinkedIn. Uh, I don't okay. like to use it as much, but <laughs> if you're on LinkedIn, and for those of you Facebook heads out there who, who think, oh, Facebook's destroying the world. I don't want to be a part of this. Yeah. But I've been wired to refresh constantly and I need to have some digital identity. LinkedIn's a decent replacement. Yeah. Okay. So you, you can follow us on LinkedIn, um, subscribe and, and listen where, wherever you'd like to, to listen to podcasts. Uh, bit, yeah. I, uh, Darren, really appreciate you having us on the show. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it has been great, guys, and I, I that's why I say that I'm I'm really glad that I actually did sign up at uh, Podit. I forgot I had the account there for a while, um, but uh, <laughs> I saw that I had a message and you guys were on there, and um, I think it's been a, a really fun episode, and it was a really cool topic that you decided to uh, go with, and uh, I'd love to have you guys back on at another time, and we can count down something else, and we can see how the show's going, because uh, I think yours is the type of show that where you get so you know you get new ideas every week and uh it'd be great to come back in uh a while and and talk to you guys about some other cool things that have happened and maybe something that has come to fruition in terms of a physical product or a service or something like that and if anything like that happens just let me know and we could do another episode uh whether it's sooner rather than later it doesn't really matter as if something like that happens i'd love to hear about it i'm sure everyone else would too so thank you very much for for coming on and making the time i really appreciate it and you guys uh stay safe in new york and uh um good luck with the your podcast and the, everything else yeah thanks for having us we'd love to come back and uh, you're also welcome if you have any big ideas then uh, feel <laughs> free, you know you know the phone number too yeah, not a problem. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Darren. Love what you're doing. Appreciate right. it. Thanks, guys. Thanks. And that was it, guys. I hope everybody enjoyed that. It was a cool episode. The guys were really, really fun. And they have a, a great concept. The, the show is really uh, a bite-sized little show that you could listen to pretty much anywhere on any sort of a commute, bus, train, in the car, in, in the car. If you've got a longer commute, obviously you can get through more episodes, which is is really fun. Uh, there are a couple of really intelligent guys who are quite funny, and I'd love to have them back on the show again, as I as I mentioned. And we'll probably count down something else, and we'll hear about some cool ideas that they've had in since we did the last recording. So anyway, thanks guys, thanks for listening in. As usual, if you want to get in touch, just reach out on Twitter, Instagram. I've got a Facebook page. Also, the Gmail account, just send through something. Send through your top 10s. I'd love to hear someone's top 10 in terms of what they thought were the 10 coolest band names. Uh, I like Dandy Warhols. That was probably one of my favorite ones, and I'd like to compile my own 10 as well, and I'd like to hear what your 10's like. Thanks for listening, and I'll chat at you again next week.